a bunch of Europeans from a wealthy socialist country pretending to be a bunch of poor white trash from the deep south, you might be rednecks. Welcome back to One Hit Wonderland, where we take a look at the full careers of bands and artists known for only one song. And today we're taking a look at a bizarre attempt to mix country music with an entirely different genre. I'm no, 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 not, not that one. No, we're talking about 90s dance music, specifically the Eurodance mid-90s groove of rednecks, who became international stars by adding a thumping dance beat to the bluegrass classic Cotton Eye Joe. This bunch of Swedes went all out, dressing in full-on Lil Abner hillbilly costumes and adopting a bunch of hick stage names. But just as quickly as they came, they left, probably because they were too blitzed on moonshine and tripping over their comically long beards. Well, I like seeing how bizarre novelty acts tried to adapt to a second hit that clearly couldn't and wouldn't happen, so I had the show. And I seriously can't imagine how a group like this could ever hope to sustain any kind of career. But believe it or not, they could and they did and they continue to this day, although not exactly as you might imagine. How? Well, sit and watch. Let's check out those tobacco chewing, tractor pulling, hayseed yokels from the land of Ikea and Cook Booler. Well, before Cotton Eye Joe, America was transitioning from an agrarian to an industrial society and was increasingly being torn apart by the question of slavery, when a songwriter whose name is lost to history composed a song about some guy named Joe stealing all the hot women in the county, which eventually became very popular in the latter half of the 19th century, becoming a bluegrass standard and later getting popular again in the 80s and 90s when the line dance craze took off. But I suppose you thought I meant what was going on with rednecks before Cotton Eye Joe. Well, there is no before Cotton Eye Joe for Rednecks. Rednecks did not exist before the hit. Okay, well what about the individual members? Well, Rednecks doesn't really have individual members because they're not really a band. See, Eurodance doesn't really worry that much about who's making the music. Now, to be sure, the genre does have stars and recognizable names, but it's not that big a deal if you don't know the biography and character of the people making the music that you're dancing to. That's just kind of the way it is. The labels just have a grab bag of performers, producers, and musicians, and it's not uncommon for them to drift in and out of various projects without much regard for making any particular authorial mark for themselves. So Eurodance artists tend not to be thought of as artists, I guess, or at least not auteurs. For example, All Music's biography for Rednecks could probably stand to be a little more detailed. The Swedish dance combo Rednecks had an international novelty hit in 1995 with Cotton-Eyed Joe, a driving number that reworks American country music into disco. That's it. Only one sentence, and they didn't even spell the name of the song correctly. That's how much all music cares about them. But Rednecks does have their own story of a sort. See, they have a distinct image and sound that they maintain. They're not a band, but they are a brand. They don't have any consistent members. In fact, every one of their original members, either in front of or behind the camera, was already gone around the time they released their second album. Eventually, they grew to the point where they now have a large group of performers that go out on separate tours simultaneously, and none of whom perform on the records. Those are all done by studio musicians. They're a lot like Shanana, in that they're as much a performance ensemble as they are recording artists. All the people in it are replaceable, and the music doesn't really matter all that much compared to the image. Like Kiss. But before it evolved in all of that, Rednecks did at least start out as a normal musical project. It was created in 1992 by three Swedish producers, Jan Eriksson, Urjan Uberg, and Pat Reines, who were the guys that came up with the idea to mix bluegrass and instance Europop. That's literally all I know. But I'd been forgotten, I'd go. I'd been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Rednecks' first single was Cotton Eye Joe, released in late 1994. By the early months of 1995, it was a top 40 hit in America and a number one hit in the UK, Sweden, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, the Netherlands, Belgium, Finland, Norway, and for some reason, New Zealand. It was a big damn deal, so it does deserve at least some analysis, but I usually like to analyze lyrics and it's pretty safe to say the lyrics don't matter to this one. There is basically one trick and one trick only to Rednecks' Europop reworking of Cotton Eye Joe. Namely, that it's a Europop reworking of Cotton Eye Joe. I, I mean, listen to it. It's Cotton Eye Joe with a dance beat. Isn't that amazing? This may have been more of a novelty in 1995. Nowadays, we have the internet, and anyone with GarageBand can add a into all sorts of stupid things. 
Even back then, though, adding dance beats to non-dance music wasn't new. They've been doing that since the days of the disco. But Cotton Eye Joe isn't exactly worthless or lazy, either. If this song isn't entirely awful, it's because the original Cotton Eye Joe is a good, sturdy folk song, and I like fiddle music. From what I've read, I think the vocals are new and not sampled from an old recording, but it sounds like it very well could have been. On top of that, bluegrass and Europop aren't completely incompatible. Bluegrass can be dance music, you know, and the stomp stomp clap of a square dance hoot nanny isn't all that different from the ns 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 techno. That said, it wears out its welcome very fast. I find it very annoying. It, it doesn't exactly modulate or go up and down, it's just too much energy all at once. Like, if you listen to when the fiddles play in the background, you can hear them going, hee, 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 hee. Once you notice it, you'll never not notice it. Also, they add their own new verses with a distinctly Swedish sounding singer and a very not bluegrass melody that, that doesn't match at all. No, that does not work. Thank God the song is short. Now, many techno acts will dissolve pretty quickly when they run out of ideas, but <sighs> Rednecks were not one of them. Let's see what they came up with next. It's just the same song again. It's almost literally the same song again. They've made so few changes, I'm not sure I wouldn't just call this a cover of Cotton Eye Joe. And yet, despite being exactly the same, it's also somehow like a thousand times worse. Cotton Eye Joe did at least have the authenticity of being based on a real old American standard. Old Poppin' and Oak, as far as I can tell, is just something they made up themselves. Something about someone's dad getting chased up a tree by a skunk. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's basically just nonsense words thrown together because they sort of sound like Cotton Eye Joe. And, um... You know, I'm not sure if I should even mention it, but am I might be only one uncomfortable by the way these guys dress up in their hee-haw bib overalls and their stupid stage names like Billy Ray, Misty May, Maverick, Ace Ratclaw. You know, it's, it's one thing for Southerners to dress themselves up like that, but these guys are all mostly from Sweden. I, I get no indication from any of these songs they know shit about bluegrass or the people they're dressing up like. I, I don't think that's how a fiddle is even played. I'm, I'm honestly not comfortable that the name is Rednecks either, you know, like... No! That is our word! We are allowed to use it, not you! Okay, maybe I'm not a redneck myself, but I, I did live up in the Appalachians for a while. It's, it's where I ate, shat, and slept for a good many years. I know the area. I'd like to think that I have a pretty high tolerance for caricaturing and stuff like that, but this is tiptoeing right up to the line. I, I mean, it's kind of... Re Okay, well obviously that's not the right word. Hillbillies and Southerners aren't a race. Oh, oh god, no, I'd rather call it racist. Okay, how about obnoxious and stupid? That sounds right. Although, trust me, Eurodance can be much, much worse than rednecks. What the hell, Europe? I don't know, maybe it wouldn't rub me the wrong way if the music were better, but it's not. It's really bad. The US enjoyed the novelty of Rednecks for one song. The UK let them stick around for one more before getting sick of them, but the rest of Europe let them have intermittent success off and on for the next 15 years, including several hits from that same album. The weird thing is, they're kind of inconsistent with the whole Redneck thing. The two other big songs from that album were both ballads, and, uh... They don't bother me at all, but at the same time, they're not country either, and it doesn't have any of the novelty. I, I can't say I find them all that interesting. About five years later, Rednecks regrouped and released a second album, and while they are still dressed like Rednecks, they decided to expand their influence a bit. Look, this one has an African chant in it. And 
and this one is all Native American. I guess they were smart enough to stay out of the video and not put on any headdresses themselves and start whooping out a war chant, thank God. Around that second album, they kind of realized that the bottom was about to drop out of the record industry, making them probably the smartest people in the record industry. And they transitioned themselves into the performance group I talked about earlier. They never released a third album, but they have kept issuing singles off and on. For example, in 2008, they released a song called Football Is My Religion. Well, if there's anything actual rednecks like more than football, I, I don't know it, but of course that's not the football they're talking about. This is actually the unofficial anthem for the 2008 European Soccer Championships. So they're dressed as American cowboys singing about soccer. If, if you're not going to commit to your gimmick, I don't even know why you still have it. By the way, Sweden got knocked out in the first round of that tournament, in case you were wondering. And in case you think this means they've evolved away from clumsily grafting dance meets onto a sad reworking of bluegrass, think again. Yeah, they are still flogging that dead pony to this day. Uh, I believe the brand, Rednecks, and their parent company are still owned by the same three producers who started the project in 1992. They put the entirety of the band and its trademarks and properties for sale in 2007 for one and a half million dollars. As of 2013, that price tag has actually gone up to 2.9 million dollars. As of yet, there have been no takers. I, I really grew to loathe this band over the course of this review. That said, did they deserve better? Well, they actually did about as well, probably even better than you can expect a novelty Europop group to do, and honestly not all of their songs are bad, I kinda like that Native American one and the African one. But yeah, you only have to hear one techno version of The Devil Went Down to Georgia before you give up on the entire enterprise. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that one. Oh well, thank God I still had the chance to share that one with you. The devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind because he's way behind and willing to make a deal. So yeah, rednecks. One gimmick extends far too long. And remember, it can all be yours if you've got three mil to spend. Can you believe no one's investing this amazing business opportunity yet? Wow. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe?